Oh, guys, guys, this just in. This, I was just out getting a cup of coffee. I scroll through the dirt sheets. Guess what I see? Islam Makhlchev will fight Conor McGregor. Now, let me stop you right there. There was a lot more said than this, but let me stop you right there. There's something known as the litmus test. And if you're doing ethics, if you're talking about responsibility, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the person you're negotiating with. My father did a lot of business and he had partners a lot. And they only had a handshake, but they would work it out on day one of their partnership. If you ever want to buy me out and you come to me with an offer to buy me out, I get to turn that offer on you on the spot. Meaning if you offer me 200 grand for my 50%, I can tell you, you give me 200 grand and I take yours. Did I say that right? Did you guys follow me? But it's called a litmus test. It's important in ethics to know if the roles were reversed, how would you behave? Now, Conor McGregor, the only one that can spoil Islam's party of being the number one contender is Conor. That isn't going to happen. I will tell you guys right now, this little game that we're going to play and act like we don't know, it's not going to happen. Islam is going to fight for the championship. But hold the thought. Hold the thought. Everybody wants to fight Conor. But everybody gets upset when Conor gets an opportunity in front of them. So what Islam was attempting to say, I believe, is give me the next title fight. If you guys are so big on having McGregor in here, I'll go ahead and fight Connor next. Do you see the problem with that? You're putting yourself in the with the biggest opponent into the biggest fight. You're saying that he can have a title fight. But you're also trying to say, not now, now's my turn. And this just got tested. Oliveira wants to fight McGregor. McGregor wasn't back yet, so he's going to fight Gaethje. But when, before you guys cry in your beer for Justin Gaethje, Gaethje would have taken the same deal. He would have taken Conor McGregor over Islam or over Oliver. So you can't feel bad for him. And now it's Islam's turn, but Islam is stating he'll do the same thing to the next guy. So if it's good for the goose, I mean, do you see the problem? You can't have it both ways. You just can't. Islam went on. Okay, I told you he said more, but he did go on to say Connor hasn't beaten anybody in a period of time. If Connor can come back and beat somebody, I'll give him that fight. So he did within the same article at least put one performance that was successful to Connor. But he had to work to get there. It wasn't his initial thought. His initial thought is the same as every other fighter's whatever is best for me today. Then you start to bring in the ethics, you bring in the wins and losses, you bring in the rankings, you you you, you Try to manufacture a competitive architecture, which we all know doesn't exist in this sport. It's the only sport like that. Every sport done in the NCAA, Division I, Division II, NAIA, Junior College, Olympic Games, OSAA, any regulatory playoffs for the NFL, NBA, NHL, is that right for the guys on the ice there with the sticks? They have a competitive architecture. It's known as a straight line bracket. You versus you, whoever wins moves here. You versus you, whoever wins moves in against this. Right? They, they, that's, we don't have that in MMA. There's a lot of politics in MMA. Now, we do our level best as sports people to adhere to a rankings, to wins and losses, to common opponents. We do our absolute best to find out who should be fighting the champion on any given night that that title is going to be contested. I admit to that. For sure, that is Islam Makhlchev. We as a community will look like fools if it's not Islam Makhlchev. But the one guy that can ruin the party has not spoke up yet. We don't know if Connor's going to try to ruin the party. Just out of sport and just to stick it up Khabib's ass, Connor might come in and demand that fight. Well, then what do you do? Don't, 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 don't take all the fun from me. Don't say, well, we go ask Dana and Dana makes a decision. Now, I get that. But Dana is like an accountant and he's going to make a decision based on the information that he has at the time. So let's say Connor comes and speaks up, says, I'm fighting the winner. Dana says, no, no, hold on. I'm rolling with Islam here. But let's say Oliveira becomes the winner and Oliveira says, I will fight Connor. I will fight nobody but Connor. As a matter of fact, not only does he say these words, he says it live on a broadcast at a pay-per-view. Let's say the same thing happens, but it's Justin Gaethje. Hey, stick it to Islam. He can wait in line. Bring me McGregor. Now, McGregor 
and Gaethje have agreed to fight before Dana weighed in on it, and they did it on worldwide TV. I mean, do you see my point? Islam's fighting for the title. We're going in circles here. Islam's fighting for the title. But, but, if you were to say the next best thing or the most next most likely thing, you're going to come to the conclusion of Conor McGregor. It's not really all that obvious at 155 pounds. It's not. All our studs have been beaten. They've all been beating each other, and Chandler's coming off a loss. McGregor's coming off. Poirier's coming off a loss. It could be somebody who's coming off a loss. Don't forget the scenarios that happen all the time, the unforeseens. Islam gets hurt. Islam gets a visa issue. What we're told is happening with Shemaev right now. Unforeseens happen all the time. There was a gentleman in the WWE who got inducted into the Hall of Fame. His car was late to the event. They started the event. By the time he got there, it was they didn't put him in the next year. They didn't put him in the year after that. He's not in it right now. So the old expression of nothing is done until it's done is seldomly seen to be more true than in this sport. And we, of course, would have come to Islam's defense. Of course we would. If Islam got sidestepped for a guy who's a bigger draw, who got carried out of the octagon his last two times, of course we would have revolted until we found out from Islam that if he had the power, he'd have done it to the other guy. That's where you see words matter. Islam didn't mean for this to be a powerful statement. He's not interrogated. He, he wasn't under subpoena to be there. We are not the FBI. But we will sure treat it like that. We'll treat it like a crime scene. We will break down every single word you said. And then we will interpret it. And then we will use them against you. It's a tough game, but these things matter. And when you're playing one of these games, you've got to eliminate as much as you can. Khabib is saying that Dana White has already called and said Islam is the number one contender. Now, I don't dispute that, but I wasn't in the room when it happened. And to make the number one contender meaning you're going to fight the winner of two guys, and the guy's got no history and no beef with either one of those two guys. He's good with whatever. That's a sweet story, but that's called Little League. That is, that is how the amateurs do it, just out there chasing the trophy. That's how, this is prize fighting. It can still happen. It takes more work. It's going to happen in this case, and we're all going to have to work. But Islam's got to be careful. You can't say that you'll fight McGregor if he comes in and gets one win. You can't say that if you get the title, you're going to give the fight right to McGregor and then expect people to defend when McGregor takes that very fight from you.